Hey friends, welcome to another episode of the Handyman Success Podcast. We are here basically to share stories of successful handymen uh, with you in hopes to inspire you and motivate you towards greatness. I'm Alan Lee, one of the co-hosts here, joined with Jason Call. Um, I am with Honestly Handyman Services and the Handyman Journey, and Jason is with Handyman Marketing Pros. And we are joined here today uh, by Joseph Millis, someone who is fantastic, been around the handyman industry for quite a while. Um, so we are super excited to dig in and hear a little bit about his business. Um, so let's get to it. So Joseph, you want to go ahead and kind of introduce yourself and let us know where, you, where you're located, how long you've been in business, things like that. Sure. Well, I'm here in Enid, Oklahoma, where obviously you'll hear it today is blowing like 70 miles an hour outside. It's the main thing it does around here. But I've been, I started this business in 2010. So I guess this will make 12 years of doing this and really started it because my parents started buying rent houses here when we moved here to Oklahoma. And they went through so many guys trying to fix these houses that eventually died at the same, at the same time as I was getting pressure from my wife to quit training horses because she said we've had a first kid and you're going to die doing this. So <laughs> why don't you do something safer? And he was in a spot, dad was in a spot where he needed help on the houses really bad. So I jumped in and just started working with whoever he had hired at the time. And it, it went from there really, uh, did that probably did that close to six, five, six years before I ever did a job for anybody else that was of any significance, you know, mm -hmm. and then eventually you catch up working on your own houses. So I started doing more and more outside work. And at this point, just this house I'm sitting in now is the only one of our rentals that I'm actually working on right now. I've spent all mm -hmm. day at another house and just here to touch up some sheetrock today. So I keep it moving along, but probably 50 50 for most of those years has been either working on my houses or theirs because as it as it started moving along when you have days that you don't have very much to do i got the bright idea to maybe buy me a fixer upper house and go work on that or later on when i started adding a few more helpers i have something for them to do on all the days that i don't have a job you know which Unfortunately, hasn't been the case in about two years, and I've got houses that I need to go work on now. But uh, probably two, two and a half years ago, we started kind of accidentally picking up a commercial job or two. And at this point, now that's probably more than half of what I do uh, wow. between restaurants, hotel, that kind of thing. And I absolutely love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Eventually, hopefully I slow down enough to get back and finish some of the houses of mine that I have. But <laughs> in the middle of all that, too, we bought a we bought a ranch about 15 years ago and I've got a boarding stable going there as well. So I'm in between all of this stuff. <laughs> That's so, awesome. So you're still doing horse training then? I'm not training. I'm just boarding. I own oh, okay. a facility and people pay to keep their horses there. Okay. So that that's about what that involves. And then of course, putting hay out, fixing fences, fixing water lines, all mm -hmm. the construction equipment comes in really handy for that too. <laughs> yeah. That's but awesome. Yeah. That's, that's what we've been doing for quite a while here now. And kind of the latest real addiction has been the commercial work. I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. That's great. As long as you have a good owner to work with, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what do you like about the commercial work? Um, rather than the residential or what do you like differently about it well with the ones i have i signed a contract with these people to where i have a set rate that they don't have to worry about you know getting a quote from me every single time they just call and the problem gets taken care of and i love that there's i don't have to deal with you know when you have a hotel that has as much work needs done to it as this one that I'm on now, you know, it's brand new. It's literally a year old. Hmm. Um, that is the equivalent of a whole lot of residential customers all in one spot with one contract, one phone call. Right. And once you're comfortable and they trust you to do the work, the owner will just have his manager or whatever, send me a picture of what happened today. And Hey, can you sort that out? And then hmm. I bill them on the first and the 15th and, 
as long as they keep paying, I'll keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. But, uh, so Joseph, uh, as far as like Millis Construction goes, what would you say like your percentage between um, you know, working on your own properties, rentals, uh, residential and commercial, like kind of what's your, what's your breakout on, on the different like business segments there? Well, it's varied every year. So okay. if you look at just like the last 12 months from now, it's probably been 50% commercial and probably 25, 25 on the other half, 25% okay. of residential customers and then 25% our stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, that, the commercial stuff kind of took over my life the last year and a half or so. Which, well, why do you think no that is? Here. Was it, uh, I mean, is it the owners of these commercial properties are kind of connected and your name gets floated around? Yes. Or... Oh, okay. Yes. I did a, I did a job rebuilding a, the kitchen in an Italian restaurant here in town. And that guy ended up using me for everything when he got done. I mean, I do his personal house. I do... Hmm he owns two restaurants now. So I get every call to everything. And then he has two brothers and they have rental property. <laughs> and then it turned into just in the last few months, they want me to do all the rental property call outs now too. Is this just easier. And then when the new guy bought the hotel, that's across the street from the Italian place, he went through about four handymen in under a month and couldn't wow. get anybody that actually could deliver on what they said they could do. And so this, he was visiting with the restaurant owner across the street and ended up meeting me when I came in for lunch one day, he practically drugged me over to the hotel and said, you have to meet this guy. This is who you need. And <laughs> we signed a contract that day for the first year and we've wow. gone, ever, we've been going ever since. Wow. But what is, uh, if you don't mind fleshing out a little bit, like what does this like contract kind of look like? Is it just like a set rate for like your, like your, your business well, time on projects or? Well, um, he does a guaranteed 10 hours a week on his contract that okay. he has a minimum billing to me of 10 hours a week, whether we use it or not. Hmm. Okay. That's what it costs. Per so it's week. kind of a retainer if he doesn't use it. Right. He has a weekly retainer for me mm -hmm. up to 10 hours, but sometimes he might use me 40 50 mm. hours you know in one week because something insane happens yeah like we've had water leaks that have damaged four stories of it at one time kind of a thing mm -hmm. and that's happened three four times now so when something like that happens it turns into an emergency you end up there all the time but when he does that i'll let him spread that hours those hours over weeks when he doesn't have stuff for me but mm -hmm. i'm guaranteed a minimum of 10 hours a week for a year at my set rate so what is so is that rate the same rate that you give a residential client that you that you try and work per hour or whatnot or how, what's that look like well yes but by him signing a year i don't get to go up for a year Oh, I see. And You're that's, locked in. That's really benefited him right now because with everything else going up, I went up twenty five percent this year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. with doing that, he avoided that until we signed yeah. the next contract. Yeah. You know? yeah. What What but, is your uh, rate that that you bill or look? Uh, you know, kind of price uh, right now. Is, right now is one twenty five. Okay. An hour. And uh, but, whenever you do, uh, like I guess residential work. Um, do you bill by the hour? Do you look at the project and give them a project estimate? I I bill by the day. And okay. I have half day and full day. I all, okay. I'll occasionally have a service call, but it's really rare anymore on anything except the commercial stuff. The residential, I mean, a service call, I'm, I think the last few I've billed 225 to show up. And that's usually something like a garbage disposal or something really easy. I still have customers that will call me for that little stuff all the time, even though it's not as much my focus anymore as it used to be. But normally like my 125 an hour is figured for me as a 10 hour day at $1,250 a day. Mm -hmm. And that's eight hours of site work. Mm -hmm. There's two hours in there that I can use for paperwork, logistics, if I need to be working with getting material before I get there. That's just eight hours on site, two hours for me, whether that's writing estimates. It's a little bit of a way to get some of my time back that gets spent on these jobs that's unpaid if you don't do that. So your your day rate is figured at 10 hours? Correct. Okay. And, and what, is your half day rate figured at five hours? 
Yep. Okay, I could do math. See, okay. <laughs> really, really easy setup. You know me. I've been doing it really simple nice. for a long. Time. No, I like it. You were I, uh, you know, not to. Well, I guess we could do a shameless plug, but Joseph Millis pricing was featured in the Handyman Pricing Handbook. Um, yep. And yeah, where you you we had talked about you know how you do the the what is it? It's a half day and a full day rate. Yep. And that was different than me. That was really interesting to hear from you because that's we've never charged that way. But I think that's a that's a really good way to charge, especially for charging like a half day at five hours and a full day at ten. That, mm-hmm. that makes perfect sense. So, right, makes okay. writing estimates take no time at all. Right, because you just ask yourself, can I do that in a half day or can I do that in a full day? There's none of this. Is it going to take three hours <laughs> or four hours? It's so yeah. easy to be wrong between right. the hours. But if you just have two parameters to go by, you can get this done really quick. So so if someone calls you up and just for instance, say, I just need a fence post replaced, you know, you would say what, a half a day, you know, or, well, you know, like how I does mean, that, that you that's know? where I'm saying it would fall more into the occasional service call that I do that I build I like 225 to go pop one in. But okay. I don't get that call very much. Okay. Partly just because of how my website marketing everything is. If somebody calls me that's not already a customer, they're not typically calling me to do something little. Mm-hmm. It, it's really rare. Okay. Uh, they won't even call me really to do one little sheetrock patch in the wall. Mm-hmm. It's usually multiple sheets if I get called or the whole room kind of a thing. So, you know, or the so whole what's house. Your, <laughs> what's your uh, like average dollars per RO, like average dollars per job? Is it usually like full day or? Usually full week. Full week. Oh, wow. Okay. So you're doing yeah, pretty I, sizable jobs. There aren't very many one to two day jobs. I'll do them. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm on one right now that started out. I bid it at two days. Mm-hmm. And as soon as we got going, she liked what we're doing. And now she's expanded it to a full week. So they, they do happen, but they're a lot more common than service calls for me, but they're still a week is normal. And a lot of stuff will take a month. It's a good topic we had to cover actually uh, at the, at the front end. Cause it kind of puts into perspective to listeners. Um, like, so you're, um, you gave us the breakdown of your commercial about 50% and 25 residential 25 on your, your rentals. Um, what is kind of your, your ideal focus services that you're doing the most of? Uh, Cause you mentioned a lot of these jobs are more than two days. Well, there will be entire uh, gut a house, you know, and put it back. We do a lot of that, wow. especially just a full room, um, do redoing inside garages, we do a lot of sheetrock, a lot of paint. Uh, my bookkeeper lady that we finally hired somebody full time <laughs> to do that kind of stuff. Now, mm-hmm. when when she's caught up, she paints for me nonstop. Wow, like that is all <laughs> she gets to do, and she can have as many hours as she wants. <laughs> that is a unique so, uh, team member you yeah. have there, bookkeeper slash painter. <laughs> when you're not doing the books, you yeah, get to paint. Well. Um, <laughs> She was the general manager of the hotel and oh, okay. I ended up, she was doing all the book work there. She's really good with paperwork, but she wanted to do more hands-on stuff like than me. she'd been doing. So she's very experienced <laughs> at the book work and really intensive book work stuff, really. And so it was just really easy to do this and say, Hey, you know, if we squeeze in a day of book work a week, that'd be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that's, that's great yeah. uh and that's kind of alludes to uh, a question also for kind of just framing uh the uh, millis construction but what what does your team look like there's you you mentioned you have a full-time bookkeeper slash painter <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> i love that combination i gotta look it's for fantastic <laughs> but i have i have a retired air force guy that i've had now four or five years he'll probably watch this todd uh todd. hi todd hey todd <laughs> you rock is, todd He is great at woodworking, and that's actually how I met him was in the wood turning uh, classes that I've taken and the club that I'm in here. And so he ended up getting curious, I guess, from there about what I was doing and ended up hanging out on a couple of jobs and worked himself right into a job. And he had a unique way of starting. He told me he wanted to see if he liked working for me, so he'd work a week for free. (laughs) (laughs) So he not a businessman, Todd. It's been, it's, been years. it's been 
been several years now and he's still here. So oh, that's great. I, apparently he liked his week. <laughs> it's, awesome. a, it's a blessing to have good people, you know, and Todd sounds yes. like a good feller. So that's awesome. He, he really is. It's somebody you don't have to worry about, you know, showing up on your job in a condition that you can't have around the customer. Right. Like some of the people I had before. <laughs> <laughs> not every yeah. helper shows up like you want them to every day you know yeah. we've got it narrowed down to where i've got her i've got i've got judy got todd and i've got uh michael quite a bit as well which is kind of a lifelong friend of mine that is mm -hmm. now working for me so that's worked out really well and that's pretty well most of our crew that's awesome right. and do you pay those do you pay those people w2 or 1099 they're all 1099 right now okay. Cool. We probably will eventually work to W-2, but mm -hmm. uh, they all set up their own little companies. They all have their own insurance, and they're all actual real subcontractors. Nice, nice. So That's awesome. I just pay them a little better for doing that. So mm -hmm. they're not, you know, getting what they would get most places probably. Mm -hmm. Very cool. But, Very cool. So what? Uh, so overall, like, what would you say are some of the biggest wins that you've experienced in both business and personal up to this point? Biggest wins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I, I thought the, uh, the, the restaurant owner taking me and introducing me to the hotel owner was kind of a huge win. To yes. me. Now, it's really, I don't know. It's a little bit impressive to have a customer literally walk you to another customer of that caliber <laughs> and say, this is the guy you need hire him now <laughs> yes that's amazing so so that, that was huge in the last year so yeah that's huge so so it with that if someone was wanting to get into more commercial work and you know hotels how would you say like you they should get started who should they talk to you need to go right in and talk to the actual owners okay and here in our town uh the Ambucks are really unique in that a lot of the business owners here are members of it. Hmm. So if you go to some of their meetings, whether you're a member or not, go in there and meet some people. It's really neat. And you can possibly even get on a list to speak and hand out your cards or whatever. It happens there quite a bit. I'm not a member here, so I'm not <laughs> pushing that organization, but... <laughs> like every business owner here is a member from what mm -hmm. I've seen. And if, if you're there, you get to just, you know, have breakfast with them, whatever they're doing that day. And that was a really neat thing to me, mm -hmm. but yeah. otherwise just literally go into the front door and ask if you can meet with the owner sometime when he has some free time. Mm -hmm. And it'll probably surprise you how many of them, if they're not, you know, a big chain where they have somebody that covers a whole bunch of stores or something, you know, like a Dollar General or something, they usually have a crew guy that covers a whole district of stores. But if you're talking about your restaurants locally, even your hotels, a lot of them are owned, you know, individually or just two or three hotels by one person. And they may desperately need somebody. Mm hmm. Because apparently the talent pool can be a little thin on some of those guys. You don't want to walk in, though, and be after a job as the maintenance guy at the hotel. There's a dramatic difference. Because mm -hmm. this hotel pays like $15 an hour to the maintenance guy, okay? <laughs> so what, so, yeah, what, what distinguishes that from you from the maintenance man? Like, why do they even have a maintenance man on staff? If he doesn't you. now. And that, oh, see, he had okay. to sell that to the hotel company, the chain that the hotel's from, because he's required to have a maintenance guy. Mm -hmm. But the way he pitched it to them on the call that we were on to them <laughs> was the amount he'd have to pay the guy, even at $15 an hour for 40 hours a week. Nobody wants to work less than 40, mm -hmm. plus all of his insurances and then having no insurance coverage for the damage that the guy could actually do to the building and all that kind of stuff made me actually a cheaper option to just ah. have on call at the 10 hour range. Mm -hmm. And he did plenty of tests. He had multiple guys before, so he knew about what he would get in a 40 hour week. Mm -hmm. And he got a lot more from me in 10 than he was getting because it becomes really hard to find things for these guys to do past a certain point. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of stuff's over their head too. 
unless he wants to invest in a whole trailer load of tools, there's going to be stuff pop up constantly that he can't do. Mm-hmm. You know, as a hotel has a little toolbox, they've got a little drill, <laughs> you know, they've got just basically what a homeowner would have right. to take care of problems. Mm-hmm. If they have a section of the wall that needs retextured or they need a whole room repainted, you know, you're into very different things, a broken door, whatever. The guy's just going to stand there and look at it because <laughs> his last job was, you know, Taco Bell or whatever. And this is way above his head. Yeah. <laughs> and even if he can do it, he doesn't have the tools to do it. And there's no way you can afford to buy those tools on $15 an hour. Mm-hmm. So the hotel would have to supply everything. You're an employee. But yeah, that's really great. <clears throat> I think anyone that wants to focus on commercial work could just rewind that last couple minutes uh, and pick out these like major value points of from the you know the cheaper cost because of A, B, C, D, and E, the tools, the insurance, the liability, uh, you know, just mm-hmm. like forcefully, well, we got 40 hours a week. So, I mean, I don't know. Good luck out there because it doesn't look like there's a whole lot going on right now. Um, yeah. Anyway, there, there's lots of really great nuggets in there as far as um, actively seeking that commercial work. Um, something else too that I know we recommend on here a lot that uh, – was kind of a you know what what'd you call that that group that the business owners are part of it sounded like a chamber of commerce or rotary no, club it's the ambucks here and which they do the they do the trikes for you know people that need those type of things the mm. you you'll you'll know what it is when you're thinking about it later probably <laughs> yeah they, they're known for their trikes that they build and and give oh. away to people that really need them hmm. kind of like, things i'm thinking of like the shriners but that's not the same thing no, heard of that and here these people they put like the flags up on Memorial Day across uh-huh. the bridges and everything. Uh-huh. It's a group that does that kind of thing. They put uh-huh. they install uh-huh. like handicap ramps for people that need them at their house. A I lot don't of know stuff. if we have that stuff in California. We don't. <laughs> I bet we do. It's seems a little very, bit different. Seems very hospitable. <laughs> I know it seems very hospitable. <laughs> you know? hospitable. Uh, there's great California. people here too, but yeah, that's very hospitable. <laughs> Maybe, I'll, yeah. maybe we should all move to Oklahoma. You Shoot. need to hire uh, Millis Construction if you want something like that yeah. put in around here. Uh, the the real key there the, to take away is learning how to sell yourself, though. That's the whole secret to that getting commercial bit that you were talking about. Mm-hmm. It, it's the same with residential and everything. If you know how to sell yourself, you can convince them that you're worth hiring mm-hmm. for lots of reasons. It doesn't just have to be the money, you know. You're mm-hmm. running tools where you don't make a mess and, you know, all kinds of things like that. Mm-hmm. So just know what you're bringing to the table that's better than what they're getting now before you go in. Mm-hmm. And you can get it. No problem. Yeah. Uh, there's a guy I work with and he he focuses on commercial. And the one like one of the main points he says to make sure that people can see is, yes, we do net 30 and 45. Because, mm-hmm. you know, most of these uh, commercial, the, whoever's running it, usually it's a corporate office somewhere and they'll call up and, you know, a regular handyman maintenance company. They're like, I'm not getting paid 30 days after I do the job. Okay. Like that. <laughs> see, that is something people really need to know before they chase commercial. Yes. Right. You 100%. need to have a war chest. Mm-hmm. If you can't survive two months without a check, it's probably not your thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you got to have your are awesome uh, when they get here, but it's going to be a minute. <laughs> yeah. there, there's certainly checkbox to have in place, like the being able to do that. Uh, I think most require, a, I think it's a D and B, like a Duns and Bradstreet kind of like number that basically it's a background check, kind of credit verification on the business. Uh, uh, and, and there's some other kind of special insurance depending on your state and, and your locality. That, Bonding. Uh, bond, Bonding. Some need here. to be bonded. Yeah, it, it really... I think for commercial, because a, a lot of these companies are out of state, but they've got a chain. Like you mentioned Dollar General. Uh, I think guys would be surprised that, you know, Dollar General has a home office. And when, you know, one of their locations needs maintenance, they don't have anyone on contract. They're they're searching and they're trying to find somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, so ticking those boxes, though, for the, the commercial work, that's a different set of boxes to tick. But, uh, you know, that's a good point, though, Joseph, like you, you having the war chest and, you know, you got to be OK <laughs> with not getting paid for a month, two yep. months. But when you can when you can do that, when you sell yourself in the right way uh you know i know a lot of people out there that really enjoy the commercial side Mm -hmm. it's just so so much more relaxing to me to not have you know to talk to five different people in a week for the Mm -hmm. work you're doing Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and the manager just signs the clipboards. Check. He came. Yep, yep. I that's cool. Work, but I have one check coming to worry about, and that's it, you know, mm -hmm. from that deal. So, mm -hmm. yep, that's I huge. love it. Yep. <laughs> what, what do you use for, uh, do you use any type of invoicing or estimating software to write up? I use Joist. I just Joist. always okay. use Joist. And at this point, they're processing all my payments too because I thought I would really hate the PayPal integration that they did. Mm -hmm. But honestly, it's better than what they were doing before. <laughs> before people would pay and it would process through whoever they were using. And it would take me, you know, two to three days before it hit my bank account. Wow. But it hits PayPal the second they pay the invoice. Mm -hmm. So if you have a PayPal card or anything it you've already got access to it right then which is really nice and paypal is good about getting it in your bank account like the next day as a rule mm -hmm. so i yeah. love it yeah i think joyce is a good option like i always because i know joyce has a free option um and then also mm -hmm. if you're kind of like a high ticket low volume you could certainly you know make it work i think joyce could uh, there's not as much integration as other options but if you're doing kind of lower volume higher ticket it's you can maintain it pretty simply because mm -hmm. uh, I know, right. you know, for handyman businesses are doing, you know, anywhere from three to 10 jobs a day. It's quite a bit to keep up with. There. That would be a lot. Yes. Mm -hmm. But for me, it's, you know, one to two a week, probably right. as a rule. So and then the, the commercial stuff, they just have a running ticket on there. I just have an invoice going. I run it out for however many weeks they want on that invoice. And then we close it, send it off to them and we start the next one. And go. that's just that's just the way it is so for for those commercial jobs that you got going on right now like do you have uh your workers out there right now or how does that look like or do you go personally out to them it depends uh as a rule i'll show up if mm -hmm. it's just the service calls on those unless it's really minor but the only times the helpers are really there is if we're doing something major for them. Like we've had a pipe bust and flood a room or a toilet over flooded and, and flooded a whole room, which has mm -hmm. happened and, you know, gone down through the ceiling to the next room underneath kind of a deal that, you know, at that Jeez. point I call all hands on deck and we're mm -hmm. there as long as it takes to get it done. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's even really another aspect of the commercial is those are insurance claims that I'm describing right. when they happen. And that's been over and over here. So over the last year, I've gotten a tremendous amount of experience working with commercial insurance claims <laughs> and getting paid from those, which is a mm -hmm. whole nother, <laughs> a whole mm -hmm. nother animal. Mm -hmm. But the pay on that is even better than this. Hmm. So awesome. Uh so Joseph, I know one one kind of topic I I'd, I'd love to steer into because I see uh, it talked a lot about on the Facebook the handyman journey is uh, people looking at supplementing their handyman business through like rental income, um, mm -hmm. and so I, I know that's something that you know you 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 do. Um, so I guess if you don't mind shedding a little light on uh, like how you got going as far as you know getting rental properties and how that has worked with alongside your your construction business is, is that cool if we steer it that way? Yeah, no, that sounds great. Uh, I know a lot of people ask about it, and Joseph's mm -hmm. basically living what they they dream of doing. He's living the <laughs> living the dream. A little at a time. We'll get there <laughs> one day. But yeah, I think at twenty five is when I bought my first house to be a rental, mm -hmm. and I just bought nothing but fixer uppers because the whole idea was we need to have something for people to do <laughs> whenever we don't have a, the phone ringing, you know, it's just, mm -hmm. it's nice to have. You can say, well, nobody called today or that job just ended and we've got two days before the next one starts. Why don't you go hang sheetrock on that house over there for the next mm -hmm. couple of days? And so we did that um, mm -hmm. until we really got ridiculously busy the last year and a half with the commercial stuff. But before, that's what we used it as, was just a way to float through any days that you had free for any reason, really. And that has taken so much pressure off of the real drive to need to be hustling every single day. Mm -hmm. When you have money coming in every month that you don't work for directly, yeah. it, it's fantastic. And that's been everything from running the boarding stable too. We've got probably 16 horses boarded on our boarding stable right now too. And that's all rental income too. It gets run through taxes the same way. <laughs> How much a horse? I don't do I... anything with that. Yeah. How what much that? does it cost to board a horse? 
150 a month is what okay. I do. And that's that's for full self-care. They have to take care of it all Oh, themselves. they feed them and everything too. You're just they feed them rent. and water wow. them and everything. I just okay. make sure the facilities are maintained. Mm-hmm. So it's exactly like a rent house to the IRS. And that's mm-hmm. really important <laughs> because if you go out there and start cleaning that stall or cleaning that pen, now you're mm-hmm. working for the money and it's self-employment. Mm-hmm. So it's really fine line right there that you don't do the work but you can keep the property up right just like on your rentals so makes perfect sense that right and years ago before the oil boom busted here i had over 30 horses boarded all the time and we're Mm -hmm. slowly building back up we're up to 16 now again but uh between that and then buying i bought a house every year at from 25 to 30 i believe and then it was a couple years before i bought one more and mm-hmm. I've built up to six there, but my parents have got about 40 that we take care of too. Wow. And then my brother's got a few here also, as well as mm-hmm. another lady that I manage a few for too, that got to be friends with, and she didn't want anybody else doing it. So I fell into that. <laughs> so you guys own but, a town. Yeah. You guys own the whole <laughs> town of Enid, like the whole thing. <laughs> but the thing. The thing about that is if you get sick and you can't work, Mm-hmm. You know, we're not retired yet. So somebody's putting money in my bank account every yep. month, yep. whether I go to work or not. And mm-hmm. that that is an amazing feeling. Mm-hmm. Even with just the houses and, you know, the stable at 16 horses is how much? 20 something hundred a month, maybe. And then yeah, I'm not good at math, six so. houses, probably anywhere from six to eight hundred a piece, depending on the one. Mm-hmm. Nothing like your California prices, but you know. <laughs> We do what we can. Out yeah. <laughs> so we probably got four thousand forty two in rent rent mm-hmm. coming in plus the st- plus the stable. So you got six seven thousand coming in, whether you go to work or not. And that's, that's been that's awesome. just very slowly buying them all with cash. Mm-hmm. Buy those junk houses and pay cash for them. How, how much did those not junk take out cost? loans? What's that? How much do those junk houses cost that you buy? Oh, uh, well, buying them the way I buy them, I get pretty good. Uh, usually in the ten to 15000 range. Wow. So That's they're real fantastic. they're real beat up. Well, it uh, generally yeah. takes about 20000 to fix one. Okay. That's what and I've you, generally put into it. Not counting assume, my labor, but, right. you know, what I spend on it is about 20000 to turn one over. And I assume you do for sale by owner, like you you don't deal with realtors or anything. You just talk to the well, uh, and buy from primarily them. foreclosures, okay, and and tax properties, mm-hmm. okay. You know, uh, that's, so that's what I buy. If you had, so I know there's lots of handyman owners out there that uh, they're looking at getting into, you know, getting their first rental, uh, getting their first fixer upper, and starting to build that that passive income that that you've achieved with your six houses. Um, what what kind of advice would you have for that person that's that's looking to get into that? Uh, any like tips or things to start looking at? Uh, you know, any advice on selecting properties? Just really anything that you know might be helpful for well, those kind of folks. The way I started for my very first one, I knew that if I tried to buy a house at this at this uh, bank auction here, and it was in Enid city limits here, there's no way I could get that thing bought with the amount of money I had saved up. So I went looking for houses that weren't in town. I went for the little bitty towns that are out around us here. Hmm. And I, I bid on one that from the picture they had in the ad, just looked like a tree pile. <laughs> you couldn't even tell there was a house there. There were so many trees. Mm-hmm. And nobody even spent the time to drive out there and see if there was, because it was 25 minutes from town. Wow. And I almost didn't either until the night before the auction. I went, well, there's that one house that I didn't go look at. I probably should. Mm-hmm. And I drove out there, and it was nicer than some of them that were in town. Wow. Just they had taken a picture of it in the middle of summer, and the trees <laughs> were completely covering it up. And I this is it. If I ever had a chance to pull it off, I'm going to buy this house. And I went there and the taxes on it and everything brought the starting bid to something like $3,600, $3,700, something like that. Wow. Guy bid, a guy bid $3,900 and I bid back 4000 and I bought it. 
Wow, for four grand. That was the first one was for four grand, yes. What year was that? Uh, <laughs> 2000, shoot. It, it'd be around 10 years ago, eight to 10 okay. years ago. Wow. Okay. And so I went in there about. and I spent $3,000 on that house. That's all I had to do. I painted the inside and carpet was even good. Just cleaned all the carpet, cleaned the whole house up, painted the inside. I think I put a vanity and a toilet in the bathroom and that might have been it. <laughs> Mowed the yard, cut a bunch of trees down, cleaned it up, spent 3000 total on it and rented it for 550 a month. And it's been rented for, I guess, eight years at 550 Boy, a month. That's, that's so a think heck about of a business the return. decision. Yeah, that's but awesome. See, the deals are out there, but you have to be willing to look where other people aren't just a little mm, bit. Yep. Yep. And that, yeah. That house is probably, I mean, fixed like it is now, it, it, maybe 65, probably mm. 65,000 is what it's worth. Wow. And <laughs> I, yeah, but I bought one as recently as four years ago was the last one. And I paid 13,000 for that one. But it is literally on Main Street in a town seven miles from the one I'm in now. Hmm. And I think it's taxed at about 119,000. Wow. So Holy cow. the deals are there and it, me saying I have six houses, if you can tell by the prices, it's seriously not a brag. It's just, <laughs> you got to be there at the right moment and get that thing bought and have the cash to do it. And it yeah. doesn't take very much cash, obviously. Yeah. I, I think the biggest thing is like, you know, figure out a plan and then save up that cash for it and have mm -hmm. it like set up because, you know, people these days, like, like, oh, I'll save money, and then if something comes up, I'll buy it. But there's always yeah. some emergency that happens, right? Like your mm -hmm. car breaks down or, oh, I need to buy this new tool. But if you actually set this money aside, say this is for a rental property that I'm going to spend yep. 20 grand on, you know, like yep. have that money set aside. Like I think that's a, that's an important aspect is planning and like having that foresight, you know, so that you have the money when the opportunity comes knocking. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, look into your sheriff sales and foreclosures. Once they go, once a bank goes through foreclosure, the sheriff auctions the house off, mm -hmm. and it's really good. A lot mm -hmm. of times, we've <laughs> bought a lot of houses that way. That's how mom and dad got a ton of theirs. Mm -hmm. And uh, anywhere we're talking buying houses that you could immediately sell for over a hundred thousand and get them for twenty to thirty thousand dollars, you know, yeah. And need yeah. minimal stuff, like have Lowe's throw some carpet in there and throw it on the market if you want to kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. It can be done. Yep. Amazing. You just, Absolutely amazing. You got to be, you got to have a little bit of money available. You can't have to go to the bank to get it though. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like we're on the, I feel like we're on the bigger pockets podcast right now <laughs> talking about rental houses. <laughs> this is awesome. This is great. Well, um, let, let's kind of bring it back to the handyman world here. Um, what what kind of things do you do for marketing? And I know that you do predominantly construct, you know, commercial stuff. So I don't know how much marketing you do or how much marketing have you done in the past that has kind of got you to where you are right now. Well, I I've just always kept a basic website up all the time because yeah. it just it's kind of for me it more adds credibility and another thing to have on my card so people can go look at it after they see my business card or whatever, because I'm going to leave that with a commercial property or whatever while I'm mm -hmm. there. They can look it up, and as long as it looks professional and usable, it, it's worked for me. Because I'm not really after trying to drive tons of calls per day. I, I really I don't need that. I'm mm -hmm. booked. <laughs> you know, so... Uh, for a while, I did advertise regularly, but it was mainly Facebook ads. I'd okay. make a post of a job I'd done. I'd do a little ad on it, and I'd run that, and I'd get plenty from that. Because most of what I'm advertising to, one good call is going to tie me up for one to four weeks, mm -hmm. you know. And you don't need very many of those. Mm-hmm. And if you go into the call and know how to sell yourself, like I've been talking about, you land most of those. Because <laughs> once they call you, there's a reason they're calling you. Mm -hmm. And if you've marketed yourself right that way, then they go ahead and use you typically, as long as you can follow through and, and all that. So I don't think I ever spent more than a couple hundred bucks a month, even on Facebook, though. It's just 
getting a few really good customers and doing standout work for them every time so that they tell somebody. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I'm almost suspicious if I get a call that isn't a referral. I'll ask them right on the phone, where did you find out about me from? Oh, my neighbor over here told me about you. Okay, well, then we can do business. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. just were hunting and found the website, I already know that there's a chance that it's just, you know, tire kicking going on. Right. But right. referrals are almost 100% conversion. Mm -hmm. When somebody tells somebody how good you did or they saw it and asked who did that, you pretty well get the job. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you mentioned that person's already prepared for what you charge too, because people don't have any problem sharing. That. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For sure. That's usually so the, the second question after. Hey, who do you recommend? Uh, what do they charge? Well, how high <laughs> are they? Still they? Call you. <laughs> um, so, Joseph, you mentioned a few times, you know, being uh, knowing like how to sell yourself. Um, if you could kind of shed a little light on like some, some tips or things that you do when you show up to meet a new client that hasn't worked with you yet, like what do you kind of bring to the table as far as your sales process on having like a super high conversion close rate? Uh, well, let me think how to put this. Well, it depends really on what the specific job is that I'm going into. If it's, if it's a job where I have, where there's going to be, Around here, one of the standout things I can offer is complete dust control, for instance, for their house. If if they're having sheetrock done and maybe they've had somebody do sheetrock before and they already know that it annihilated the whole house for a week while they did it, I can come in and say that we're not going to be doing that. We're running all HEPA filtration. We have our zip walls that go up. You won't even hardly know we're here except for noise and it's only during the time when you're at work. I work around people's schedules and we try to leave an absolutely pristine job site every day when we leave. Like they can come in there and use the area if at all possible, or that area is just completely sealed off and doesn't affect mm -hmm. the rest of them. I like to sell them on how clean of a job we do and how efficiently we can get it all done too. So mm -hmm. a lot of stuff we do almost everything that's needed ourselves because I'm a general contractor here. So I already have my plumbing subs that I use. I have my electricians that I use and those guys will be right in there usually within a day for me when I call them because the thing with them and creating that relationship is paying them immediately. Everybody really loves to get paid. So if you take care of that without any fuss, as soon as they're done and don't make them wait till the customer pays you or something, have that savings account for your business that you can just take care of those guys and run your business properly. You know, then those guys show up as soon as you call because the guy they're working for down the street didn't pay him like that last time. And they already know we can go pick it up over here from him right now. He's always mm -hmm. good for it. So that's how I built that up. And then being able to tell the homeowner, you don't need to try to find a plumber to take care of that. I'll have my guy in here tomorrow. It'll be taken care of. And then we will put everything back together for you. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, we're kind of a one call. We'll do it all for you you know you don't have to worry about all that stuff and my guys i already trust them and i'm always there when my subs are or one of my guys will be we don't ever let you know a sub be in there without you know mm -hmm. so the customer never needs to worry that there's going to be unknown people in their property mm -hmm. so i like to really i cover all that really when i meet them about what kind of a experience they're going to get i sell more the experience of the job than than the actual thing we're getting done. We can show them all the, you can show people all the pictures in the world, but they're really worried about how it's going to affect their daily life. Mm -hmm. And this obviously is not your little service call kind of a job. You're selling people on dealing with you for a week to maybe a month at a time. So you want them to be really comfortable with you all the way through. Mm -hmm. And it helps to kind of convey that personality too, where you don't mind visiting and not, not coming off pushy at all. Right. Which is a hard thing. I know when you don't have a lot of work scheduled, maybe, but once you do and you can sit there, just it's no problem. You know, what day do you want to start all that? They'll they'll write the check. It's it's really beautiful how it works out <laughs> if you really just sell the experience a little bit on the bigger jobs. That's what that's I awesome. try to do. Man, that's huge. So where what are your your 
future goals? Like, where do you want to be in a year, three years, five years? Like, what is what does that kind of look like in your mind? More rentals. Okay. And um, okay. honestly, making more videos too when you get to that. <laughs> but um, between doing just more and more passive stuff, like this year, that's been one of my things is I try to dedicate at least eight to 10 hours a week now, a full day or two half days, whatever, to my side project of YouTube. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's what I do. And then having my helpers on the site while I'm taking a day off, things are still getting done, you know. So for me, it's working more and more towards that, mm -hmm. working on my own houses more and slowly phasing out of really anything except the commercial. I'm kind of hooked on the commercial stuff right now. I really have fun with it. So mm -hmm. there's almost no interference with me on the commercial stuff. Mm -hmm. So to me, it's very similar to working on my own properties at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, the, they text me and nobody is there watching me like your homeowners do. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might meet me when I walk in the front door. Hey, here's the little list of things we came up with that you need to hit for us. And then you just go do it. Mm -hmm. And that that's huge to me. You know, I'm not laying under somebody's sink with somebody sitting on a stool next to me wondering <laughs> if they can help out. So <laughs> that's fun sometimes. But as a rule, every day to just turn your music on and go to work is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Fantastic. And something, too, I, I'd like to, you know, I, I commend you, Joseph, for being like uh, there's a lot of patience and it took time to because, you know, you've got the rentals going, the stable, and, and it, it allows you to really focus on. Uh, you know, like a side business uh, to focus on, you know, being more selective over your clientele, like the commercial properties. Mm -hmm. um, it, it took time and patience and hard work and to kind of now uh, kind of enjoy that and, and focus on, on what you really love. Um, I think that's a takeaway for me is 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 patience, because, you know, Joseph, you, you bought your first you know rental, you said about 10 years ago, and it just takes patience and planning consistency. And, uh, you know, now if you don't have anything on the schedule, it's not really, uh, you know, the, the alarm bells aren't ringing. Mm -hmm. Not, not really at all. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I'm pushing very hard to take more days off. Yeah. So that for me, that would be my biggest goal this year is honestly fish more. I want to go fishing <laughs> at least a day or two a week. And I don't mean the weekend. I mean, nice. a day or two during the week, nobody's there. Everybody mm -hmm. else is at work and yeah. I can go enjoy doing it. You know, <clears throat> for me, that's uh, huge. I love that. And I think it's huge because like that is such a big thing that we have the ability to do as business owners is we can create a business that's sustainable and something that mm -hmm. even brings in passive income and allows us to, you know, chase our other dreams or start up another venture or go fishing yep. or spend time with our family. <laughs> like it's huge. But I think the other avenue of that, that I think people need to see is before all that requires a whole lot of patience. Like what Jason talked about a second ago, like it took you many, many years to get to this point, you know, and From daylight to dark. <laughs> yeah. Seven yeah. days away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> if we have patience, we can get to that. But I think we need I think the takeaways for this, like, it's very cool how this podcast is shaping out because I think we can see if what we want to do, right, we have the goal, mm -hmm. and then we need to set a plan, and then we need to have patience. You know, I think that's that's the that's the way that we hit our goals is we need to yeah. set a plan, have patience, do the work that needs to be done. If it requires, you know, like you said, working from, you know, sun up to sundown, that's what we need yep. to do. And then eventually we will hopefully hit our goals. So I think that's mm. that's a really cool synopsis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, something that I've, I've probably mentioned several times in the podcast is most people go into business for freedom, freedom of finance and freedom of time. And if most people don't get any, either of those, but <laughs> the ones that do get one, it's finance. They start making good money, but they mm -hmm. have no freedom of time. And right. so to be conscious of that and to be, you know, I want to go fishing one or two weekdays, uh, you know, I, I, I really uh, respect and appreciate that. Um, and there was actually a post uh, in the journey group uh, a few weeks ago that this guy, like someone canceled their job for the day. And so he loaded up his fishing boat and he said, yep, mm -hmm. I was that guy on the morning commute with his boat getting towed that uh -huh. and everyone else is glaring at him, you know, on the road, like, oh, this guy's going to go fishing on a Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's beautiful. Oh, I had I had one call out the other day. And it was right in the direction of the lake, so I couldn't help it. I put the kayak in the back of the truck, <laughs> loaded up. I did their job on the way. 
<laughs> nice, <laughs> man. That's huge. So hey, that's, that's, huge. that's my goal this year. <laughs> Cool. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Joseph. Uh, so we got a, a couple minutes to wrap up here. I'd love to talk a little bit about your uh, your YouTube channel. Um, yes. It's certainly related to Handyman and the trades, uh, largely around tool reviews. So um, if you don't mind kind of just talking a bit about this this side project of yours that, that you've just kind of recently started in the last year or two. Well, I, I get to about half blame Alan for it because honestly, <laughs> honestly. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pun if you ever heard one. Times in the beginning, I mean, this is several years ago. You had you were doing a lot of tools too then, mm -hmm. if you remember that. Yeah, it's I was. been a while, and I was watching, you going, "Man, that that almost looks fun." <laughs> I, I could talk about tools, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and um, I I made a video because there were a bunch of people that had bought this this tool that you use with your Festool stuff and make holes in a, in a tabletop to make a workbench. And I thought, you know, nobody's showing how to actually do it. Yeah. So I made like a 22 minute in depth, how to do this whole thing all on my phone, you know, on my work trailer. I remember I that video. YouTube. Yes. I stuck <laughs> it on awesome. YouTube and I didn't make another video for at least six months. <laughs> I didn't even know anybody had watched it. Mm -hmm. And I got a call one day from the owner of the company that made that tool the from Finland or something like that. He called me and he asked me if I minded if he put my video on their website. Wow. I was like, oh, well, maybe I should go back and see if anybody's watching this thing. <laughs> so I logged back over there and I had like 25,000 views on that video. Amazing. And 200 and something subscribers. <laughs> well, it's time to do this. <laughs> <laughs> that was all it took was just a little bit of inspiration that somebody's going to watch it. And I started making a couple videos a month and I did stuff showing people how to paint doors and hang doors and all kinds of things, just whatever I was doing back then. But about a year ago, I started doing it really seriously. Yep. I built a little studio out and that only cost like 400 bucks. <laughs> it was totally nice. worth it. It looks, it looks really good. <laughs> And uh, from there, it's just been right on up until well, maybe six months ago, I reached out to my first set of tool companies, maybe a year ago, really, when I first did the studio, reached out, sent emails to a bunch of companies because the only stuff I was getting emails from was stuff I didn't <laughs> want to talk about on the channel. And uh, I sent emails to legit companies and two of them responded, companies I never would have thought would have. And it was just, well, what do you want? We've been watching your channel for the last year. You know, what just tell us want? what you want. <laughs> yep. Um, one, one of them literally sent me their PDF catalog and said, just send us a list. And wow, that's, that's how that relationship started. Fantastic. And then Tajima asked me to be their brand ambassador. So I started doing that. And then, oh, two months, month or two ago, not long at all, Lowe's emailed me out of the blue and asked if I wanted to join them as an ambassador. So like, well, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> if you want, so, I mean, you know, <laughs> so we started, started doing that. And so far that has been the most incredible thing that I've probably been a part of. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't tell you when they're sending you stuff. You come home and you have a huge pile of boxes on the porch. And it's like, that's an amazing problem. Awesome. To have. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but it's just it's just been from literally having fun talking about tools. And there's a few business videos on there, but anymore it's almost all tool content. And it was all mainly because of you. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, what the channel inspired. name is just your business, Millis Construction. Yep. M-I-L-L-I-S Construction. Yep. Okay. I had no clue which way that was gonna go in the beginning, and at this point I can't change it. So that's yeah. what we call it. Yeah. So yeah. if you're watching this video, go check out Millis Construction on YouTube. This yep. guy is fantastic, really. He's like the Pearl Snap King of Oklahoma. Okay, like <laughs> I get a lot. Of, I get a lot of comments about that. Dude, you but... man, you make a Pearl Snap look good, bro. Like usually, <laughs> usually I remember when I got my first Pearl Snap, and I'm like, this Pearl Snap makes me look good. 
But you make pearl snaps look good. You know what I mean? Like yeah, you're well, not from this, Oklahoma, man. This I know, outfit, right? You know. I mean, this goes back to when I first started training horses at 18. I started wearing this stuff, so <laughs> I've been wearing this long enough now. It feels weird to wear. It you you should make a video on your channel of the history of the pearl snap and like where it came from for for you when you got your first one, how you felt, you know, when your dad oh, gave you your first pearl snap. <laughs> I don't know. Slightly <laughs> off brand from Lowe's, but I'm sure I know, you know, it's like, it. you know. Maybe you'll get maybe you'll get endorsed by a Pearl Snap manufacturer. We got to get Wrangler. We got to get Wrangler. There, on there you go. There you go. <laughs> I love it. So, uh wrapping up here, would you have any advice or tips for fellow handymen out there? Maybe guys just starting out, maybe guys that have been in it for a few years. What kind of advice would you have for those guys? Well, don't don't be afraid to take on something that you may, that you already let's see. Let's reword that. Um, <laughs> like I've been doing this residential stuff for a long time. That first commercial call was way out of my comfort zone. It was still things I knew how to do, but it was doing them in an environment I'd never been in before and I was really nervous about it. Hmm. But after going for it and doing it, now I have just accidentally fallen into something that I enjoy way more than a lot of the other stuff. So <laughs> don't be afraid to try something new at least once and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. If you fantastic. already know how to do it, don't jump out there and just do, you know, work that you don't know how to do, but if you yeah. know how to do it. It's in a new environment. Challenge yourself a little bit to jump out there. Same thing that happened with my YouTube stuff. You can go see some stumbling around videos. <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> all got them, dude. First hundred. <laughs> it takes a while. Stretch yourself a little bit. Yep. And then this year's real takeaway is you can pull those 16 hour days as long as you want, but find some time to do something that you want to do. I honestly push this business to the point between, I mean, obviously we're doing construction all day. Then our hobby is making videos about the tools I'm using on construction. I mean, I have <laughs> no life here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not related to the same thing. So you need mm -hmm. to find a hobby that's not related. For me, that's going to be fishing, kayaking, that kind of stuff. And force yourself to take some time off. Yep. And yep. really protect a day or two. If you have a family, if you don't have a family yet, then just go for it as hard as you can. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. But then when you get married, you've got to spend some time with them too. So yep. don't, don't ignore that stuff. It's just as important. Mm -hmm. and, and set a goal for what you're going to do to quit. You need to have that in mind from day one. And that was me. It's going to be red houses. Nobody's setting up retirement for us people like this. So for me, it's going to be rentals. And eventually, if I don't want to mess with them, if I have enough, I can just have a property manager and let them call people to deal with it. Mm -hmm. but have an exit plan whether it's stocks or whatever you want to do do it and start immediately with whatever you can start putting into that mm -hmm. if you want to save for rentals put something aside for it every single week from your check just like you hold your taxes out mm -hmm. hold out something for investing every week because in 10 years it'll it'll be over before you know it it does not feel like i've been doing this for 12 years <laughs> 12 years later I could have spent all of that on nothing else and had, I'm just living and vacations and whatever. I would have no houses. And then whenever I do catch a time off, I have no income. I have no right. plan for how to end this. Mm -hmm. Don't let social security be your plan. <laughs> make a real, right. make a real right. plan. <laughs> and for me, it's just, if you do rentals, you're already good at fixing the stuff. So you can save a pile of money over your career as a handyman, construction worker, save a ton of money by just fixing your own stuff and then using your plumbing and electrical subs to fix all that stuff. It's, <laughs> it's great. It's the perfect thing for what we do. Mm -hmm. And just just have a plan from the beginning how you're going to quit. Because I, I would have done even more than I've done. But fortunately, a lot of things have really worked out up to this point, and I can take time off. My just things can happen in your life that you don't see coming to. Like what, maybe a year, a little over a year ago, my wife suddenly had two strokes in a month, and I ended up being home 
for a tremendous amount of time because I have three kids. What are you going to do? You yeah. can't, you can't go to work. So you have to have people that you can have go keep your things moving along, but you're down for a while. You need some money coming in from somewhere else and you may need it a lot sooner than you think in your business. Mm -hmm. So don't think you're going to do it in five years. You're going to do it in 10 when this takes off. Do it now. Do it now. Yep. Love it. That's something that uh, uh, Profit First, a huge business book that I, I share with folks and I mean, it's super popular, but uh, something that they say is it, just start right now. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's a muscle that you're working on. Even if you just stick away a little bit of money, like five, 10 bucks a week, uh, just start there because yep. you're going to build up that muscle and you're going to get used to working it out and you're going to get better at, you know, saving up and, and kind of moving towards that bigger picture that's outside of your day to day, uh, your construction business. Mm hmm. Right. Definitely. Huge, huge. Man, words of wisdom. Thank you so much, Joseph. It's been uh, an honor having you here on the podcast. <laughs> uh, wanted to say to our viewers here, uh, definitely go check out Millis Construction on YouTube. Uh, and then also I wanted to highlight our Handyman Success Mastermind group on Facebook. It's a little bit different than the Handyman Journey Mastermind group, uh, whereas in the Handyman Success Mastermind group, we, we talk about business and marketing. We're going to make sure that we get Joseph into that group because if you have any questions at all from this podcast, go to that group. You can tag Joseph personally and talk to him. Um, just a kind of a great resource of kind of creating a good community about mm -hmm. business around business and marketing. Um, wanted to say thank you guys so much for uh, listening to this podcast. Thank you so much, Joseph, for being on. I know that you are uh, helping to bring hope to so many people. So we really appreciate you, Joseph. I hope so. Thank you yep. for having me. Yep. yep. Thank you so much. You so you guys have a fantastic day and we will catch you on the next Handyman Success Podcast.